You can sell your product on your own website through marketplaces like Amazon, through distributors, uh, you can sell it through small retail chains, and hopefully eventually even through big box retail chains. So how should you price a product for all of these different distribution channels? Should you have different suggested retail prices depending on where it is sold? For instance, if you sell directly to a consumer from your website, you won't have any distributors or retailers taking a percentage of the profit. If you sell through a distributor who then sells to retail chains, then you've got multiple people taking a percentage of the profit or the markup on the product. As you sell in different distribution channels, you're going to have different profit margins. That's assuming you keep your retail price the same for all channels, which is what you should do. For instance, it may seem like a good idea to sell your product at a lower cost when selling it on your own website because you don't have any middle people taking any of the profit. You may think that selling your product at a lower price will help to boost your initial sales. Let's say your product has a suggested retail price of $100 and that it roughly costs you about $25 to have it manufactured. If you're selling through your website, you're paying $25 per unit and you're selling them for $100. You get to keep $75. Versus when you sell through a retail chain, they're going to want to buy it from you at half of the retail cost, typically. If the retail cost is $100, they're going to want to buy it from you for $50. In this case, you're buying it for 25 and selling it for 50. You're making only $25 per unit versus making $75 per unit when you sold it through your own website. And it can be enticing to sell it through your website for only $50 to try to boost sales. But that's not a good idea for several reasons. If you're trying to sell through retail stores and distributors eventually, then you're going to turn them away really quickly with this type of pricing strategy. This is because no retailer wants to sell a product that can be found for a much cheaper price online. Let's say you're selling your product at Walmart for $100. Walmart is not going to like it if your product is available for only $50 on your website. This can make them decide right away to not even carry your product. Undercutting your own product's retail store price is a good way to irritate your buyers. So be sure to sell your product for one consistent retail price across all buying platforms. Even though your profit margins will be higher when selling through your own website, you must keep the suggested retail price the same. Having this higher profit margin can help offset the higher cost per unit price during early production runs that are low volume. On your first units, especially at really low manufacturing volumes like hundreds of units, if you have to sell your product at break even or even at a loss, that's totally okay. You don't typically make much profit on your first units. There's no middleman when you sell it directly to consumers, so it's possible to still make a profit even if the manufacturing costs are less than optimized. Selling the product yourself can help fund your startup as you ramp up to higher volume production and the subsequent lower per unit cost. That's why I always recommend that you start off selling your product on your own website. Selling on your own website first has other advantages too. It allows you to build up a sales reputation and sales history. If you're selling the product like hotcakes from your website, then trust me, Walmart or any other retailer is gonna be a lot more interested in your product than a, than a product with an unproven sales history. That's why it's good to start with your own website since it has the highest profit margins and the lowest barrier to entry. Your lowest profit margins will likely be when selling through big box stores or selling through a distributor who then sells to big box stores because then you're going to have a lot of people taking a percentage of the profit for each unit. But the upside is the massive sales volume that's possible when selling through large retailers. So how much of the profit do retailers and distributors expect to make from selling your product? Well, it varies from industry to industry and from retailer to retailer, but the standard is for a retailer to double the price that they pay for a product. There's even a retail term for this, and it's called keystoning. Keystoning means you double the price that you pay for a product. In this case, you buy it for $25 from the manufacturer, you sell it to Walmart for $50, 
and then they double it again and sell it for $100. That's equivalent to 100% markup or a 50% profit margin for each person in the chain, which is fairly typical for physical products. A distributor typically will make a lot less of a percentage, and instead of a 50% profit margin, a distributor will typically make maybe only 10 to 15% profit margin. Each type of industry has different profit margins based on their business model and what types of profit margins they expect. Even though 50% is very typical, I would say profit margins for a brick and mortar retailer can vary between 40 to 60%. Remember that the final suggested retail price needs to be the same for all of these different channels. What will change is the profit margin that you make on each of these different distribution channels. In general, you're going to make lower profit margins on higher volume distribution channels. The highest profit margin is through your website, but that's also probably going to be the lowest volume channel. Contrast that with Walmart, which can sell at really high volume, but you're going to make a lot lower profit margin. And that's just the nature of selling physical products. Your profit margins are going to be different based on the different distribution channels and the types of production and sales volumes that you experience from those different channels. As far as setting the retail price for your product, there are different ways to do it. You can set a price based on the value that someone gets from the product, but you also want to factor in your manufacturing cost. The different ways of determining how to price your product have to come together. For example, let's say you determine that people value your product at $50. Well, if your manufacturing cost is $25, that's not going to be enough profit margin for you. Typically, you want your retail price to be at least four times your manufacturing cost so you can earn close to a 50% margin when selling through retailers and distributors. I should clarify that for some products, if you can hit three times your manufacturing cost when you're first starting off, well, then that's still pretty good because you can work on optimizing your profit margins down the road. I wouldn't focus too much on maximizing profit margins in the early stages when you're running low production volumes and the higher profit margins will come later. But you need to forecast your future profit margins. Once you get production volume up, your profit margins need to be up to at least 40% although 50 to 60% is an ideal profit margin if at all possible. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video here where I break down all of the costs that go into estimating the manufacturing unit cost for your product so you can therefore calculate your retail sales price and your potential profit margin.